Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel, I'm Rob and today we'll be jumping into malicious compliance. Before we start, please hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you know when the next video goes live. Our first story today comes to us from Happy Affirmative. So either do this history course or you won't graduate. So be it, let's jump right in. Since everyone seems to be posting about how their high schools tried to screw them, I guess it's time I tell mine. Keep in mind, policies and rules might have changed since when I was in school. I should also preface this by saying my middle and high school were very poor, very small, and right next door to each other, less than a block away. The counselor also worked for both schools and many teachers taught at both. Graduating class was less than 50 students, most years closer to 30. So I moved from another state to Washington State during the last month of my 8th grade year. As such, when I showed up to school in Washington, I was told I was going to be exempted from the state history requirement. I was told the requirement was needed for middle school graduation, but since I showed up so late, they weren't going to hold it against me. So I go through two years of high school without any issues. During my junior and senior year, Washington offered a program which let me attend a community college full time instead of taking high school classes. I would get my college credits, and the high school would award me high school credits as well. That way, I'd be able to graduate with both my diploma and an associate's by the end of my senior year. The tuition was all paid for by the state, so I only had to pay a few minor fees. Junior year goes by without a hitch. I attend the college and rack up 50 credits. Come the end of my junior year, I'm meeting with the new high school counselor to discuss my next term of classes before the school year ends and everyone goes on summer break. The old one just resigned because she just had a child. So we're having a pleasant discussion about what I'm going to do in the future, and out of left field, she says, Oh, by the way, you still need to do that Washington State history if you want to graduate. I'm going to go ahead and enroll you for that. Washington State history is a 7th grade class. So we go back and forth on this as I insisted that I was given an exemption due to my late arrival in 8th grade. Basically, she was expecting me to go to the middle school for an hour right in the middle of the day to take this 7th grade history class, and I wasn't having it. Not only would it make my college classes impossible to get to, since the commute was half an hour each way, but it's also right when all the important classes were held, calculus, physics, and chemistry for my fall, winter, and spring terms respectively. To say I was upset would be an understatement, as I would have had to have taken standard high school courses, no AP since I didn't do the summer projects, that fit around that time frame. So I went home and rung my college counselor, who was so unbelievably helpful throughout this whole endeavor. As it turned out, I didn't need to graduate from my high school. As long as I was enrolled in high school, I could attend the college tuition free. And if I achieved all the requirements necessary to receive my associate's degree, then the college would actually award me a Washington State diploma, which I guess is different than a GED in addition to my degree. So I returned to my high school the next day to speak with her again. I told her what I had learned from the college counselor and basically, here are the highlights of what was said. No, that's wrong. You have to graduate from, insert high school name. You don't get to graduate from, insert college name. Why not? The program only says I have to meet the requirements for my associates. It doesn't make any mention about meeting the state high school requirements, nor, insert high school name's requirements, nor even getting the diploma from here. Well, we won't let you graduate. So either take this history course or you won't graduate. Then I won't graduate. Well, that's your choice then. I leave, go on summer break, fall semester begins, and on the first day, the middle school and high school are back. I get a call from the office. College courses started four weeks after public schools. Hi, OP. So I noticed you were absent from class today. Any reason why you didn't show up? Oh, it's my high school counselor. What do you mean? I'm not taking any classes at the high school. Well, you're supposed to be at the middle school taking your history course. We talked about this already. Yeah, and I said I wasn't doing it. I don't need to. You don't get to say what you do and don't have to do. This is a requirement. You know, you don't get to graduate if you don't take it, which means you'll have to be here a fifth year. Not wanting to deal with their crap, I hung up on her. I spoke with my college counselor once again, and she reaffirmed that I was totally in the right. 
and that as long as I managed to get another 35 college credits before the end of the school year, I would graduate in June with both. But of course, my high school continued to play their games with me. Thursday morning, about two weeks after hanging up on my counselor, I get an automated message from the school for a truancy infraction, saying that I needed to come in and have a meeting with the principal about my attendance. At this point, I was fed up with my high school, so like any reasonable person, I decided I was going to drop out. Meeting with my college counselor once more, I had a lengthy discussion about what exactly was going on with my high school. Being the amazing woman she was, she helped me figure out how I could drop out and still attend the college. She even pulled some strings to help me get last-minute scholarships, which covered like 95% of the cost. Thank you, Miss Allen. You were a lifesaver. With my future plans better secured, I arranged for a meeting with the high school the following week. Here's the gist of what happened. Hi, OP. So, counselor tells me that you've been skipping class for the last two weeks. What's up with that? Well, see, I... He's trying to get out of having to do his history course, the one I've been telling you about. He said that he doesn't actually have to do it if he doesn't want to. No, I was... Well, look here, OP. You need to take your education seriously. How do you think it reflects on the school if you're skipping all the time? So the conversation continued like this for a while, the principal and counselor exchanging opportunities to cut me off as I'm trying to explain myself, as well as lecturing me on the importance of education and whatnot. So while they continued blabbering on about nonsense, I slide them a manila folder across the desk. A good college? What is this? Dropout forms. You told me that you can't graduate unless you do this history class. So I won't graduate. And we all sat in silence for a good 30 seconds as they went from staring at each other, to me, to the folder, and back. I guess they weren't expecting me to call their bluff, at least not like that. Now, as I prefaced, my graduating class was tiny and we were in a poor area. Most every student graduated, probably the staff manipulating grades to get everyone to pass, but the average GPA was not very high amongst my friends and I was on track to being valedictorian easily. I had a 3.9-ish GPA, was on the varsity track team for three years, even as a freshman, and went to regionals twice, not state, unfortunately. Not to toot my own horn any more than I already have, but I was also president of my high school's honor society, president over all five members. I was set to go to UW, and I made the front page of the local paper for winning $1,000 talent show the previous year. So needless to say, I think I was pretty good for the school's image. So after sitting in stunned silence for what felt like an eternity, the principal and counselor started fumbling over their own words while simultaneously trying to talk to me and over one another. That went on until they both ran out of breath, to the point where I think the office windows began fogging up. Finally, I was able to say my piece. You threatened to not let me graduate unless I took this class. Then you threatened me with this truancy thing. I get that you're trying to force me to graduate from your school so y'all look better. At least I think that's what's going on. But my decision is final, and that's your copy of my papers. I'll be getting my GED this month. And yeah, that's about it. I got my GED and associates by the end of the year without any issues. I didn't get to attend my graduation, but I didn't really care. I didn't attend the ceremony for my associates either. I did get to go to my senior prom though as a guest. All in all, I think it worked out all right. If OP's GPA is as high as they say it was, then they actually did screw over the school a little bit on their GPA average for the graduating class. I'm not sure if a lower average would affect their funding, but I'm sure there's some repercussions. Also, if anyone is interested, I'm pretty sure the name of that college program was Running Start. Check out the Karma Comment Chameleon podcast now available on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Just search for Karma Comment Chameleon. Our second story today comes to us from Brandilio. If you don't do the senior project, then you won't walk during graduation. Well, okay then. Let's jump right in. Back in 2013, I was a senior at a high school I had just transferred to. I had moved earlier in the year because my parents got divorced, and I made the deliberate choice to leave my old high school and move in with my dad, attending a new high school. I won't go into much detail about the why, but it was my decision to leave my mom, my old school, and my hometown in the Bay Area, and move to a small apartment with my dad. This comes up later. 
Normally, switching schools isn't a huge deal, but it was sort of an abrupt move. I wasn't able to take any of the AP classes I normally would have taken because they all had mandatory summer projects that I wouldn't have been able to do in a week. Additionally, a week into the school year, we were told about this stupid senior project they wanted us to do. In a nutshell, there was some acronym like IMPACT or something, and each letter represented a value of the school. They wanted us to write about how IMPACT had influenced us in our time at the school. We were then told that, should we not do the senior project, we wouldn't be able to walk for graduation. I heard this and thought it was stupid for a number of reasons not the least of which being that I had only just gotten there, so their dumb acronym didn't mean anything to me. I brought this concern up with the lady telling us about the project, and her response was that I just figure something out or don't walk. Well, okay then. I brought it up with my dad, asked if he gave a hot crap whether or not I walked for a high school graduation. He did not, so I just figured that I wouldn't do the project. End of story, right? Wrong. You see... A few months into the senior project, they did a checkup on every senior. We just lined up in our homeroom to talk to some lady from the principal's office and told her how close we were to being done. When I walked up, I told her that I wasn't doing it. She was confused. You're not going to do it. You have to. It's non-negotiable. No, it's not. I don't have to do it. But you won't walk if you don't do it. Yeah. Then we just sort of stared at each other and she wrote my name down and she shooed me away. I correctly assumed that this would not be the last interaction I had regarding this non-issue. Several weeks later, my suspicions were confirmed when I was pulled out of class and brought into the main office. They ushered me into the vice principal's personal office, where she made a bit of a show of pulling out some papers. She told me that the meeting was regarding a misunderstanding I may have had regarding the senior project. She was apparently told that I didn't know what to do for the assignment, and I chose to boycott the whole thing as a result. I quickly corrected her and explained that I very clearly understood what they wanted me to do, but that I thought it was stupid and wasn't going to do it. I also explained that I understood the penalty and was fine with it. She, like the first lady, seemed confused by this course of action and just let me leave, since there wasn't really much of a conversation to be had. A few more weeks later, I get pulled out of yet another class for this same thing. Again, I'm brought up to the vice principal for a one-on-one. -on -one. When I get there, she looks like the cat that ate the canary. She begins, So, I know you were in here a while ago, and you said you didn't want to do your senior project? No, I interrupted. I said I wasn't doing the project. Well, she continued, We had a chat with your mother over the phone earlier this week. She told us that she really wants you to walk on your graduation. I was quiet for a moment. Um, I live with my dad. Right, but your mom said she'd like to attend the ceremony and see you walk. I don't think you get it, I stated. I live with my dad for a reason. If ever there were an expression that perfectly exemplified the dial-up tone, that's the face she made. After she collected herself, I was released and headed back to class. By this point, I was mostly just not doing the project because it was dumb, but them calling a family member to strong-arm me was crossing a line. On top of that, they tried to strong-arm me using a parent with whom I was no contact. I decided right then that, no matter what, I wasn't caving into their BS. F the project. F the school. F the weird tactics they were trying to use. Though, in my anger was also confusion. Why the hell did these people care so damn much about the one guy not doing an optional assignment? Also, I made myself very clear. So was that the end of it? Spoiler, it wasn't. A few more weeks later, I got pulled into the actual principal's office. The principal, for reference, was one of those guys that tried to make a show of being overly friendly and goofy, but to the point where it came off as superficial. When I got to his office, he was his usual extroverted self greeted me, and sat me down. So, I've heard about this whole senior project problem you've had going on, and I get it, trust me, I really do. You're new here, so our motto hasn't had much of an impression. So, after talking about it with the folks grading the projects, we think it'd be just fine if you had a modified project. Just do a project on one letter of impact and you're golden. He gave me a big warm smile. No. Sorry? He asked, still smiling. I'm not doing it. His smile was slowly fading. 
but you only have to do one letter. It's really not that much. Yeah, I got that. I'm still not going to do it, I stated. But you won't be able to walk on graduation day. Yep. So what's the issue exactly? You called my mom. His mouth was open like he was going to say something, but I guess nothing came to mind as we sat in silence for a good 20 seconds. Him trying to formulate an argument and me making a Jim Halpert face. I told him if that was everything he needed to talk about, I would be heading back to class. He didn't protest, so I just left. It was after this meeting that I eventually got some context. Apparently, California schools will shuffle principals around every few years for some reason that probably makes sense, but I don't care enough to research. Our principal was going to be switching schools after the 2013 semester had ended, and one of his big plans was to leave that high school with 100% participation in the senior projects that would otherwise not affect any final grade. He used the threat of preventing students from walking at graduation to bully everyone into doing the dumb project. Almost everyone. I stuck to my guns and refused to do it, and sure enough, after the deadline had passed, they made a big deal about how happy they were that 99.6% of students completed their senior projects, even though they were hoping for 100%. And the absolute dumbest part about this exercise in stupid, after everything was said and done, I was called in one last time to the VP's office. She told me that despite my refusal to do the senior project, they were still going to let me walk and gave me five tickets for friends and family. I laughed, walked out without the tickets, and didn't attend my own graduation. This story is nicely summed up in the comments. There's one that says, There are some people who think everything that happens in high school is massively significant, and others who just want to see the butt end of the place so they can get on with life. The former are always deeply confused by the indifference of the latter. One thing that makes me really curious about this story, though, is that OP moved in with their dad. OP went to school in a completely new town. Why did the school have the mother's information on file? Something to think about. Thank you to both OPs for posting their stories in the Malicious Compliance subreddit. They are linked in the description down below. Please go check them out. Check out one of these other videos, and if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories.